into May, the weather began to get much warmer. I decided to have another go at shearing Emily. Early one Saturday morning, Alan and I went down to her stable. I took with me a plastic bucket to sit on, and after a struggle, Alan manhandled the reluctant and somewhat alarmed sheep into a sitting position. Quickly, I put the bucket down behind her and sat on it. Then, with one knee either side of her body, I clasped Emily to me. After an initial struggle, she became calm as if in a daze, just as she had done when the shepherd had sheared her. Alan passed me the hand shears, and tentatively, I began to clip away the wool from around her face and neck. Now that she had become calm and quiet, Alan left me and went back up to the house. I continued clipping and cut away the wool from her chest. As I slid the blades close to her pink skin, I pushed my left hand through her fleece in front of the blades to ensure that I didn't cut her. The lanolin felt smooth and oily and the blades cut cleanly through the wool. By this time I was using the shears more confidently and started to clip down her right side, when without warning she threw her head back hard against my shoulder and thrust her front legs out before her like wheelbarrow handles. Taken by surprise, I was knocked off balance. The weight of her body pushed me down onto the bucket, which crushed beneath me. I fell backwards, and Emily landed heavily on top of me, winding me. Lying upside down, Emily made harsh rasping noises as if she was struggling to breathe. I wasn't doing too well in that respect myself. After a few desperately uncomfortable minutes, I managed to push her over onto her side, and we both scrambled to our feet. Emily soon calmed down and allowed me to continue shearing her as she stood by the stable door. Definitely a less traumatic option for both of us. An hour and a half later, I opened the door and let a cleaner and considerably slimmer Emily out of her stable. She looked very good, even though I say so myself, and she must have felt much better. I, on the other hand, looked and smelt disgusting, and my right hand was stinging due to a large red blister which had appeared between my thumb and first finger. I swept up the wall on the stable floor and picked up the bucket, which now resembled a frisbee, before returning to the house for a long hot shower. <coughs>